let's just talk a little bit about just going into it, the conflict between, you know, Roland Deschain and, and Walter, the Man in Black. Uh, what is it like to portray, you know, this conflict that, you know, in terms of all of fiction, is, is sort of singular in terms of that yin and yang, that eternal struggle between two characters? The yeah. mythic good versus evil, dark Christian and Christian tale of that. Um, and a relationship that's been going on for thousands of years. For me, I mean, I approach it as sort of a kind of a sick and twisted love story. Um, yeah. I'm trying to completely keep him down and keep his binge high because he to kill me, which means he's not worried. He's not. He's not. He's being an egotist and not the utilitarian and not worried about the rest of the world. Uh, at the same time, I don't want to. Compl- I don't want him to die. I mean, because without him, who am I? You know. Um, so what brings us together finally? Uh, my need, the boy with shine to bring down the tower, which who seeks him. And that's the catalyst that really brings us together for a, a final showdown. Yeah, I, I know we don't have much time, so I just echo a lot of what uh, Matthew just said. You know, it was great to be able to play that, you know, as an old tale, good versus evil. But, you know, when you meet Roland, he's a ghost. He's a, he's a, man, he's a shell of a man, and this boy brings him out of that. And the more he goes for Walter, but the more he starts to, you know what I mean, relive, if you like, which is great. Yeah, I mean, in the books, it, it focuses so much on the quartet, and almost at a certain point, like the two of you are also caught into that karmic circle. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is that was that something that that you guys thought about in, in you know while you were filming the movie? I mean, I know I did in the vein of what I just said. Without without him, there is no me. Without me, there's no him or each other's shadow in a way and that's what I mean by a twisted love story um, yeah. and I you know I approached to what extent this is in the movie or not I approached it as sort of I'm a Walter's guy who wants to have his cake and eat it too yeah. he's my want the boy is my need bring down the tower is my need but he's my want how can I get them both and how do they converge and can I get out of this getting both of what I want the old English term you can have yeah cake and eat it cake and eat it too <laughs> Um, now, whether that happens or not, you, you get to go see the film, as yeah. you know. Yeah. Obviously, Stephen King is one of the like premier authors of, of, of the era. Uh, did you guys get a chance to speak with him at all in the role, and did anything he say sort of inform your performances of these two iconic characters? He gave me a springboard line over the email. He said, look, Walter's got the world by the strings, and uh, slag grin on his face the whole time, enjoying doing it. You know? I met Stephen on set. And so, you know, my homework had sort of already been sort of done, but he was very, uh, it was just nice to see him and the glee in his eyes to look at, you know, me, look me in the eye, you know, and, and just say, you know, good luck with this, you know. Because, uh, you know, obviously, you know, there were some really big leaps that he had to make to make decisions for this film. And casting me, for example, in this role was a big one for him. And he had such great positive energy about that. And, and how the change, because this is the film, not the books, he really gave that, he just came across it was a real positive energy about, you know, you know, my portrayal of him. I didn't get to talk to him about my character in, you know, in detail, but it was just a very warm, sort of positive approach uh, to it. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, obviously, uh, Roland Deschain is this uh, incredible gunslinger cowboy that comes from a long legacy of... Yeah. of iconic cowboys even you know not in the series but in in just uh film and literature as a whole and the same thing with uh you know the man in black uh randall flag is this 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 sorcerer this dark wizard uh did you guys look to any inspirations in terms of like any other you know whether it be cowboys in in film past or these these megalomaniacal you know these evildoers uh to sort of uh, bring into your role now, I stayed away from looking at westerns and cowboys, you know, very different era, different, I mean, although, of course, he has the, the belt, the gunslinger, but, you know, um, I kind of saw Roland as a knight uh, more than a cowboy, uh, and that the, those guns were his swords, um, and so he kind of, my approach, just to try to stay away from the visualization of a man in the desert, mm-hmm. you know, shooting uh you know what we know as cowboys um there's an actor uh there's a film called um leon mm-hmm. right lion no leon jean renault jean renault and uh professional yeah leon. the professional yeah, yeah yeah 
And uh, Jean Monod's performance in that was a real uh, interesting, uh, it was bait for me. I watched that once or twice just because I liked his stoicness and uh, his depth. And, you know, obviously there's parallels because he has this relationship with Nicole, Kid, uh, Nicole uh, Portman's character. But you know, that the stoicness and, the, and you believed his, his journey was that it's come from a long place before you meet him. That was something that I kind of found interesting. I didn't watch any cowboy movies yeah. though. For me, I mean, look, I enjoyed the fun with which Malcolm McDowell had an art Clockwork Orange. Um, and then did a lot of studying on Hitler's right-hand man, who was <laughs> believed he was teaching enlightenment, yeah. you know, to, to expose the hypocrisy, hypocrisies of, of mankind and such, you know? Uh, I love that. Uh, obviously, uh, the movie leaves it open to some stuff coming afterwards, but also the possibility of a TV show that, that fills in those gaps uh, to when you two were a little bit younger and, and, and when you first had this conflict. Uh, can you tell me anything about that or what you might be excited about in the possible future of being able to revisit these roles of these characters at a slightly younger age? Yeah, I mean, I think exactly what you said in the sense that, you know, you know the, the, the format of television, television allows us to get deeper into sort of little groups of stories and tales and offshoots that the film, you know, doesn't allow time or space or e even a, a beat to, to, to do. So uh, I think that, um, you know, if, if the man in black and Roland appear in the TV show, uh, I think it would be a, a much layered and deeper version or time that we, you know, might, you know, use to plug for the next movie if this is successful and the one before that. So the TV acts as a really interesting one-two punch, uh, which I think is kind of exciting. 